A lot of, you know, NAD has been a popular thing within the scientific field for, for quite a while now. Um, but the science is really changing in terms of what we understand about NAD production and also decline in the body. And one of the major things that's changed is our understanding of, of first of all, how our body produces NAD and, and why it's depleted. And it's been found that the major way that our body actually makes NAD is actually by recycling it. So it has a pathway called the salvage pathway in most cells where when NAD is actually used by the body, so when it's used by enzymes and pathways, um, it, it actually gets broken down into some of its fundamental components, which are called precursors. And the main precursor which NAD gets broken down into is something called nicotinamide. Now, in young cells, they have this amazing capacity to be able to recycle that breakdown product, that nicotinamide, straight back into useful NAD again. And this is called the salvage pathway. And the majority of our NAD is actually made in this way when we're young. And if you think about it, it makes complete sense because NAD is so critical for the body. Why would the body want to rely on having to have some sort of external nutrient to make this NAD? It needs to have almost a fail-safe mechanism to be able to continually supply the cell with NAD, no matter how much it's using. So when we're young, NAD is used up, it's broken down into nicotinamide and the salvage pathway literally salvages it and recycles it straight back into fresh NAD that can be then used again for all the repair, the maintenance, the mitochondrial function um, and keeps getting recycled. Now, the issue is, is that it's been found that our NAD levels mainly decline because this becomes dysregulated with age. And the salvage pathway in older cells simply doesn't work as well. And the reason is, is because the main rate, lim rate limiting enzyme in this pathway, an enzyme called NAMPT, actually declines with age. So if you take a sample of, of someone's cells who is older, um, you will find that they simply do not have as much of this NAMPT enzyme. So what that means is in older cells, where they are using up the NAD and breaking it down into the waste product, nicotinamide, it's just not getting recycled. So cells are using it and using it, but it's not getting replenished like it should be. And, and that's a really important thing to bear in mind um, when you're looking at you know, restoring NAD levels or, or trying to impact NAD in any way. You know, what I base um, our research on is what, it, what the latest science actually is and what it shows of why NAD is declining and what the root causes are. Um, so in terms of boosting NAD levels, there, there are a few ways that people have probably heard of. Um, one way, uh, which I definitely don't recommend, is taking pure NAD in capsules. Um, and that is because NAD is a very unstable molecule. Um, so if it's just a pure, you know, NAD plus or NADH or whatever in a capsule, um, there is no way that it will go through your gut and survive and get anywhere in the form that it's needed. So that's a, a definite no-no. Um, the way that people have tried to get around this is by um, supplementing with what we call precursors. So these are the building blocks um, that, that the cell uses to make NAD. Uh, the common ones that people will know are the B vitamins like niacin, niacinamide, nicotinamide. Um, and then you've got um, NR, which is nicotinamide riboside. And then you've got NMN, which is nicotinamide mononucleotide. And the majority of people seem to, um, you know, have heard of, of these types of ways to boost NAD. Now, the way they work is they are just building blocks that the cell basically uses um, to make NAD. Um, the issue with this, taking these, is um, whilst they do boost NAD by around 40 to 60 percent, that's in the, the published clinical studies, um, that absolutely ignoring the reasons why NAD is declining. So um, I always get people to think of this as a bit of a factory scenario. So if you think of your cells as a factory that's producing NAD, because that's essentially um, what they are, um, and production goes down in that factory, um, how do you try to boost production again? Would you just say, oh, production's gone down, so we'll just order more raw material and hope 
that it gets converted into it gets made into NAD. When actually, if you took a closer look, what you realized is that the reason production's down is because the machines are broken, because there's no staff, because the pipes are leaking. Mm-hmm. Would you still think that it's a good idea just to order more, more, more raw material and, and hope for the best? No, probably not. You'd probably say, well, we could do a lot better job if we uh, you know, employed more staff, if we fixed the machines and we plugged the leaking pipes. Um, so this is where we say the best way to actually boost NAD levels is to have a whole system approach and really look at the root causes of NAD and what's going wrong. And the main root causes of NAD is because the salvage pathway isn't working as well. So what can you do to actually boost your salvage pathway to increase levels of that NAMPT enzyme so that when there are precursors in, in the cell, when there is NAD in the cell, it can actually keep getting used and recycled rather than just, um, you know, taking in more precursor and it's not actually getting converted to NAD in the first place. The other thing is, you know, look at the processes that are wasting NAD because the other reason that NAD declines is because when we get older, you get a huge uh, change in the cells in the way that they use an NAD. One of the key ones is chronic low level inflammation. Um, that is something that we know uh, people suffer with as they get older, having this low level, low grade inflammation. And that's known to cause the overexpression of something called CD38. Um, in our cells. And basically CD38 is an enzyme that just drains NAD. It just sucks it out of the cells unnecessarily. Um, And so just by inhibiting CD38 just a little bit, you can actually boost NAD levels. So again, Mm. this is like looking at what the root causes are in the cell that are causing this decline and then actually fix them. And you can use epigenin. And there's studies to show um, in cells in vitro that if you inhibit CD38, even just by a very small amount with epigenin, you can actually boost NAD levels by 50%. So this is just as good as using a precursor. So can you imagine what happens if you take a whole system approach Mm -hmm. and you actually, you know, you have a precursor, so you've got some of that raw material available and you inhibit these wasteful processes and you activate NAMPT, you're basically fixing all the issues and you're restoring the cell's ability to be able to make and use and recycle its own NAD again, like it did when it was younger. Um, and, and I guess that's exactly the approach we've taken. Um, and when we, we've took this approach uh, with our product, we find that it boosts NAD a lot better than just using a precursor. So in in terms of numbers in our pilot study, it boosted NAD by 242% over 16 days, which is a lot better than 40 to 60%. So before I um, founded Nichido, I actually worked in drug development um, and my before that, my PhD was actually in um, this, the bioavailability and pharmacokinetics of, of drugs and nutrients. Um, so that's something I'm incredibly passionate about is actually understanding, you know, how much of something has to go into an oral formulation to be able to go through the gut and the liver, et cetera, and actually end up in the cells at a, a concentration that act, will actually have some efficacy within the cells. Um, So when formulating our product, that was a a huge amount of work to to get the right levels of the ingredients and also the right combination um, of the ingredients, because within our product, unlike NMN or NR, it's not just one ingredient. It's not just a simple precursor. It's um, it's got a precursor in there. We use we actually use nicotinamide, which is one of the B vitamins. Um, the reason we use that is because nicotinamide freely diffuses through cell membranes. It doesn't rely on a transporter to get it through, unlike NR and NNMN, which um, can't actually access all cells in the body. Um, the other ingredients in there, they've all been selected based on the most bioavailable forms. So um, we met, we mentioned apigenin um, earlier. Apigenin, if you took that in its pure, um, you know, chemically synthesized form, shall we say, the the bioavailability is is actually very poor. However, if you take it in a format um, that's a bit more natural, such as parsley powder, um, which is what we actually include in our product, um, it's readily absorbed by the body. And then the the apigenin is actually released 
um, once it's been absorbed and then it's actually in a more useful form in the body. So that's why we see that it does indeed get into the cells intact in the way that we need it to do that. ALA does a multitude of different things. The reason it's in our product is it's an activator of AMPK um, is incredibly important for activating the salvage pathway. Um, the, the other thing that alpha lipoic acid does is it activates um, another enzyme called NQ01. Um, and basically what this does is it, um, it, it flips NAD between its two states. So NAD can either exist as NAD+, plus, uh, which is the oxidized form, or NADH, which is the reduced form. Um, and what we find is that if you activate NQ01, it, it pushes the ratio of NAD plus to NADH towards NAD plus, um, which is the more favorable direction. And um, whereas as you get older, it tends to drift towards NADH, which is not a favorable ratio. And um, so ALA also works within, within this capacity as well to improve NAD levels. Cool. Sephora japonica. This is one of the ingredients that we have in our formulation. And the dried flowers of the Sephora japonica tree contain the powerful flavonoids quercetin, rutin, and troxrutin. Now, these flavonoids were selected for our formulation based on their ability to increase levels of the NAMPT enzyme. So remember, this is the enzyme that is absolutely critical or rate limiting for the recycling of nicotinamide back into fresh NAD, but it actually declines with age meaning nicotinamide can't be recycled, the nicotinamide builds up, you get methyl donor depletion. So this group of flavonoids actually increase NAMPT enzyme levels and therefore improve NAD recycling and production. Now, as well as their NAD boosting capabilities, there's also robust scientific evidence to show that these flavonoids also have an, like a whole host of other range of health promoting benefits, including antioxidant effects, anti-inflammatory effects, and also highly topical right now, antiviral properties. So additionally, We've also got quercetin in there, which falls under the category of substances known as senolytic. Some of you will be familiar with senolytics, but these compounds clear senescent cells from the body. So finally, as well as all the ingredients that I've already mentioned, um, we also have some other supportive ingredients in our formulation um, just to enhance the health benefits. So the first one to mention is black pepper extract. Um, and the reason we put this in is because it contains the active molecule piperine. So piperine is actually used to help increase the uptake of nutrients from the small intestine because it allows um, various active molecules as well as the ones we including many of the ones that we've got in our formulation to enter the blood and access the rest of the body and get to the cells more easily. So this is basically added to Nichido Time Plus to improve absorption of the active ingredients. And piperine is also known to be beneficial because it actually boosts metabolism by activating thermogenesis, um, which is a process that breaks down fat cells. So that's an added bonus. Then we've got good old vitamin C here. Um, so we also add vitamin C because as well as have a reputation of being able to fight infections, its health benefits actually start far beyond immunity. So people who actually take regular doses of vitamin C have been found to live longer than people that don't. And this is likely due to the fact that it reduces inflammation, it protects the integrity of DNA, and it reduces biomarkers of cellular stress. And finally, we've got zinc. So as we age, there is a progressive decline in our immune response. And, you know, that is so relevant right now to the world that we're living in. And supplementation with zinc has been helped to found reduce this impairment of the immune system. So that is why it is included in our formulation. 